Hello everyone, this is Eugene Lee Show, and today I'm going to be uh, teaching you how to use our bullet trajectory app in Scene. I'm using Scene 6.1 at the moment. Uh, this is a beta version, but uh, it will work the same in Scene 6. Um, so this will have a new interface, but you can in fact uh, go back to the uh, traditional interface if you wish, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, a couple of things uh, before getting started. Uh, the Bullet app is really intended to be used fully in 3D, so it's not meant to be used in planar view uh, or with raw data. So you work in 3D uh, with scan point clouds or project point clouds. So uh, if you have a number of different scans, that um, you want to keep sort of separate, uh, it might be better to have some separate projects or something like that. So first you want to uh, process the scans, then put them together, register them all, and then create a project point cloud, and then you can start working with them. The project point cloud is not uh, required, but uh, it's uh, always an efficient way to be working. Okay, so if in case you want to go back to the um, previous interface, what I'll do is I'll go to the settings button here, and here there's a button that says switch to the user interface. Now if you have been using this before, it's still in the same location. It's right here. So if I click on this, uh, now I've already got a project here, So, um, but you'll see that this little uh, uh, menu comes up and that's the uh, same in the new interface. So I'm going to kill this and I'm in fact going to switch back. Okay, so that's back here. I will go to the Explorer. Now I'm only using one scan at the moment and I processed this scan and it also has um, spheres inside of it. So if I zoom in here you'll see that um, there are in fact spheres on these trajectory routes. Um, so uh, you don't have to use spheres. I'll show you that you can use points uh, and there's uh, a number of different things you can do. Okay, so I have a couple of trajectories already but I'll show you how to make a, a couple more. Uh, so let's try, oh I don't know, let's try, let's try this one here. So we need to go to the apps section, which is right here. And here you'll see the bullet trajectory tool. So uh, I can just click it, enable the bullet trajectory tool. I get the same menu that was there before. And there's a couple of different options here. So um, let's just walk through them one by one. This, this one says uh, choose points. So I'm gonna choose points. What that means is you can choose points on a rod, you can choose points on the floor, any points that exist anywhere, uh, scan points, uh, you can select them. So, um, and the cool thing is after is that they are adjustable. So the first click, I'll click here, uh, creates the arrow head. And then when I do a second click, you'll see that it makes the tail. And I, I can call this uh, number three. You can rename this to whatever you want. Let's say a trajectory uh, points, uh, sorry, points three. And when I hit OK, uh, this menu comes up. So I can change the color. Now you see it changes here, and you can also change the dimensions. Now, when I look at this, you'll see it comes down to the ground. So what's what's neat about the trajectory plugin is that you have full, full uh, control over this. So uh, let's say, for example, I wanted to lift the tail up into the air. I can just go down here to the origin, and where it says up, down, I'm just going to click on this and just keep it pressed, and you'll see that it starts to uh, go up. Okay. Now, if I go to a top-down view, You'll see it's very, very sort of oblique here, so I can change that as well. I just go change the left to right. I go the other way. I'm just keeping it pressed. Now, if it's moving very slowly or too slow, you can always just change the adjustment here. So if I go in 10 centimeter increments and I hit this now, it'll go uh, very quickly. So you'll see like this. Okay, it's much faster. So you have full uh, control over this. You can move it around. You can change the thickness. Um, uh, the diameter of the rod. So here I've got it set to one centimeter. I could make it five centimeters and make it really thick like that, like a pointer. Um, but I'll, I'll put that back. So the other thing you can do is you can add an arrow cone. So I'll click on this and it says, hey, do you want to lock the origin or do you want to lock the destination type of thing, uh, which you can. Um, and you can even just set an angle. Let's say I have a, a five degree angle um, and uh, uh, let's see and I just hit OK like that. You'll see that it, it sets up something like this. Now you can flip this, you can change the size uh, from, from either end. Uh, you can also change the color. There's a number of different things in here that you can do. So, um, you know, mess with some of this and uh, uh, you'll, you'll sort of get the idea. Okay, so that was using points. Now I'll just use spheres. It's almost identical. It's a second button here. So I'm going to click on this. I'll click the first sphere. And then I'll click the second one, and you'll see that it creates the trajectory. Now, just like uh, I could rename this again, 
the menu comes up and now I can make this longer or shorter so let's say I want to make it longer because it's kind of short right now I'll just click on that and you'll see that it goes out again I can add a an error cone and uh, I can do some different things if I wanted to extend the the front end I'll just go here longer shorter I can make it go through the vehicle uh, whatever it is that I want to do and again you can adjust it from here as well up and down and move it around which is kind of nice. also here it says reverse direction so you can do that uh, you can also remove if you don't need this trajectory or you think it's a false trajectory you can change that just by hitting remove but I'm going to keep it now another important point here is that the vertical angles are all based on the uh, scanner and clinometer so uh, the scanner knows which way is up so um, you know that's okay that's pretty much automatic but um, there is a compass function and that's this button right here so if I click on this button actually I will uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one here uh, I'm going to remove it and I'll create a new one now the compass is rather important so if I click on the ground that places it and then I'm going to click two times I'm going to go click and click okay and that is the heading so you'll see that the um, arrow or the north pointing arrow uh, change directions. So that is the zero heading and all measurements are taken relative to that clockwise. So positive will be clockwise. And that's sort of important because um, there is no way to really say what your zero heading is. So you could make it based on the car, you could make it based on a wall, um, you know, really, really wherever you want. So um, when I click on this, this menu comes up and same thing I have some adjustments here so I can move this around now one of the things when you put the compass on the floor uh, or on the ground if the ground is somewhat uneven when you're rendering it it can actually sort of dip through the floor again so you kind of lose it um, what I like to do actually is just uh, click up so it's sitting just above the ground and when it's just above the ground it never dips uh, below the scan point so it's always always uh, visible um, other things you can do is you can make adjustments so um, to the rotation so if you start uh, here if I just start clicking on this you'll see it's back and forth like that uh, moving in sort of five degree increments so if I wanted to rotate this 90 degrees to where I was uh, that's about 90 degrees now my zero heading is perpendicular to the side of the car so that can be very useful as well uh, and also if you want to change the size right now it's at a one meter uh, size I can go to you know 0.5 and I can have a small compass compass if it's getting in the way or something okay so that's the compass the next is this uh, origin so I have an origin here and what this does uh, is actually creates uh, or let me explain it this way um, your trajectory start and end positions are all based on a scanner position but sometimes when you're at a scene there may be manual measurements that you want to compare to so you can set your zero 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 okay basically the the, the origin of the coordinate system and um, I can remove this and I'll just show you again so I will click on that and let's say let's say I wanted it at the foot of this tripod here so I'll just click it there and uh, it's uh, important to note that the or this origin symbol aligns with the compass so when you change the compass uh, this uh, changes as well um, so yeah you can again make this larger or smaller and make some adjustments to it if you want to shift it around so um, again this can be useful and now when you go back to your trajectory positions they are all relative to uh, this position here in X Y and Z okay finally uh, we have our reporting Okay, so I'll click on that. And what this does is give you a summary of everything that you've pretty much done inside the uh, app. Now, one of the cool things here is that you can capture screen capture. So uh, you'll see uh, when I click on three, when I click on one, or when I click on these, it tries to snap to different views. But let's say I, I capture, all I have to do is once I have a trajectory um, uh, selected and I have a view that I want, I just have to hit capture. And you see that I've collected a, a screen here. I'll go to the second one, I'll move it around a bit get it where I want it and let's see a second one and I'll just go capture and I'll go to the, for this one here I'll just go capture and I'll go to this last one here and go capture now you can also make notes um, it also has um, you know some other uh, important information here based on the destination and again this is all based on where that uh, local uh, coordinate system origin is that we placed and uh, and that's pretty much it things you can do from here is you can generate a word report so I'm just going to save this to my desktop and I'll call it uh, trajectory report trajectory report and I'll go OK and you can also uh, I'll open this just so you see what it looks like um, but you can also 
uh, export the DXF. But this is what the report looks like. It's a very basic report. You can change this to make it um, uh, to suit your needs. Uh, you basically have all your information here, as you can see. And uh, yeah, that's the Word document. Um, but also, um, you can export as DXF. So these lines and such that we've created, we can export them. Um, now, they do not look exactly the same. They're not, it's not a VRML export, it's just a DXF. So they're actually very basic lines and circles. Uh, nothing too fancy, but it is enough that you could actually reconstruct them uh, um, in, in another program, like a CAD program or something. Uh, last thing is the settings. So depending on what your units you want, you can set this to uh, meters, uh, inches, uh, that sort of thing. Also your precision, right? So if you want greater precision, you can do that. Um, your defining order when you're clicking uh, destination first, origin first, you can change that. And also the compass default size and the default colors. So you can mess with a few little things. Now here is your uh, licensing button. So um, sometimes you may even see on here that there's an update. So we, we have automatic updating at the moment. Um, but if you want to demo, if there's um, some things that you want to do, like deactivate this and license it on another machine, uh, there are some other things that uh, we can do here. So that's the bullet trajectory app in a nutshell. Uh, not a lot more to it, but uh, I'm hoping that you're going to find it a useful tool. Thank you.